When I was a kid, I used to love comic books. At the back of a comic book, there was always this ad for a pair of x-ray glasses. The idea was you put them on, they give you x-ray vision, you can see the bones in your hand. <laughs> I wasted 10 bucks on those glasses. But what if I told you there was a pair of glasses that would allow you to take a peek at what's going on inside your brain? Well, there is. This is the electrical activity of my brain. The glasses you just saw me put on are measuring my brain waves, or what people like me call EEG. Our thoughts are represented by complex patterns of electrical activity within neurons, the building blocks of our brain. And technology, like the glasses I'm wearing, can measure this electrical activity. You have to admit, the glasses are pretty cool. But the reality is, the technology to measure EEG isn't that complicated. You can buy these glasses at your local electronics store. I don't actually make the glasses. What I do is make the glasses interesting. I do the math. That's the trick, the hard part. Developing the math to analyze EEG waveforms to understand their meaning. Recently, I took my research team to our local hospital. We were there to study cognitive fatigue, a state when the brain is tired and you're more likely to make mistakes. Our goal was to use technology like the glasses to measure and track cognitive fatigue in doctors and nurses while they worked. We collected our data right in the ER, in the middle of the chaos. To ensure the doctors and nurses took part in our study, we gave them a Tim Hortons gift card each time we measured their brain waves. Our incentive worked. 60 doctors and nurses volunteered. In fact, one nurse volunteered eight times in one shift. That's a commitment to science. Our results showed that doctors and nurses were tired after a 12-hour shift in the ER. And not too surprising. However, we found a subset of doctors and nurses who were experiencing cognitive fatigue at the start of their shift. In other words, these doctors and nurses were in a brain state where they were more likely to make a mistake when they began working. How did we know the doctors and nurses were tired? We figured out there's a unique EEG pattern when people are experiencing cognitive fatigue. My home base is the University of Victoria, where I'm the lead scientist of the Theoretical and Applied Neuroscience Laboratory. Like most professors, I teach classes, I go to conferences, and I supervise graduate students. But the reality is I spend most of my time in front of a computer developing mathematical algorithms to analyze EEG waveforms like the ones you saw at the start of my talk. The patterns in EEG waveforms are wildly complex. And to understand them, we use math and equations like these. OK, I know that looks a little bit complicated. So to help you understand how I understand EEG, let's talk about music for a minute. Music is made up of a series of notes that have both pitch and duration. To create music, composers arrange notes into different patterns. As we listen, our brain interprets these patterns and we draw meaning from them. EEG is made up of a series of waves that have both amplitude, the height of the individual peaks, and latency, the time between the peaks. And like music, EEG patterns have meaning. The brain waves on the left-hand side of the screen are from someone sitting quietly, and the brain waves on the right-hand side of the screen are from the same person while meditating. What you're looking at is enhanced alpha activity. It's one of the EEG frequencies that increases during medication. But there are even more complex patterns in the EEG waveforms. These patterns are too hard to see with the naked eye, and that's where the math comes in. Math allows us to transform the EEG waveforms so we can see the patterns more clearly. And it also allows us to decode the complex relationships in these patterns. Right now, you're looking at someone thinking. Within these patterns lies cognitive fatigue. Think of 
all the instances where cognitive fatigue can impact us. Tired truck drivers and pilots, tired bankers and executives, and of course, tired doctors and nurses. And cognitive fatigue is just one of the brainwave patterns that we're identifying. As we improve the math, we believe we'll be able to find a unique pattern for any brain state. This is going to be a difficult problem to solve, but I believe it's solvable. You know, growing up, I just wanted to be a basketball coach. I did that for a while and taught high school physics and math. I decided to go back to university for a graduate degree, and one course in neuroscience changed my life. I found my passion, decoding the complex patterns in EEG waveforms to understand their meaning. So, what's next? I want to take neuroscience out of the lab and into the real world, and perhaps even to Mars. In December of 2019, I led a Canadian research team on a one-week mission in the high seas Mars habitat on the big island of Hawaii. Our goal was to demonstrate that technology like the glasses, combined with math, could be used by astronauts to measure and track cognitive fatigue and other brain states. The HAB, as it is called, is eerily like Mars. It's in the middle of a rocky red volcanic field. We were in full simulation that week, working as astronauts. Each day, we went outside on assigned missions wearing spacesuits. Inside the HAB, we did chores to keep it operational. We lived off of freeze-dried food. We had to exercise for three or more hours a day with only 60 seconds of water to shower. That's actually one of the things I learned about space exploration that I didn't know. While they can't hear you scream in outer space, they can smell you from a mile away. And of course, we did neuroscience. We measured our brain waves at breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Given 16-hour workdays and living conditions similar to those on the International Space Station, we did get tired. By the end of the week, we were all experiencing a brain fog, and our decisions and actions were clearly impacted. I know I don't trust the math I was doing at the end of that week. But the key part is, we believed we were tired because it was a pattern that we saw in our brain waves. On an actual Mars mission, that potentially means the decision to see if an astronaut is ready to take on a dangerous task wouldn't be based on an opinion, but on a mathematically derived result. Now I have to emphasize, these are preliminary findings. We're working to publish them right now. But the brainwave patterns that we saw in the HAB were the same as the ones that we saw in the hospital and other studies that we've already published. At the start of a Star Trek episode, they say that space is the final frontier. You've probably guessed by now, I'm a bit of a nerd. But I believe the brain is the final frontier. By decoding its signals, we can better understand how it works, what's happening when it's performing well, and when it may fail us. And by combining math with emerging technology like the glasses, we're developing a capability to measure someone's brain waves anywhere, at any time, in just a couple of minutes. Take a second and think about what that really means. Thank you. <laughs>